Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review of a couple new products from the company Vaviva Colors. I have reviewed their products in the past, so you can check out those videos if you want to know a little bit more about their color sheets uh, or their sketchbooks or whatnot. But we are going to look at some brand new offerings that they have. And the first one um, is this kind of like portfolio type type product and it's um it's made from vegan leather and you open it up and you've got a um basically like a binder here it has a sketchbook it comes with a sketchbook it comes with a waterproof back uh, black pen this is the um kiritake uh, manga 05 so it's like a 0.05 nib from zig um, and I've used that and I'll show you some stuff I've done with that as well. It comes with a water brush. This water brush is a little tough to squeeze. I will tell you that right off the bat. Um, I've been kind of spoiled with the Derwent brushes lately with a soft button squeeze. So let's see if those fit in there actually, because I don't know if they will or not. They might be a little too big. Yeah, I don't think it will. Cl oh, now it won't quite close if I put those in there, but um, it comes with a kind of standard water brush and it comes with a set of 16 of the Viviva color sheets. And what you can do with this actually is fold the lid back and then you can put it back in the slot. There's three slots here, so you could put other things in there. I guess maybe a debit card if you didn't want to bring your wallet. Um, if you do that, then you can have the palette open. You can flip through the colors as you use them, which is, um, they're all separated by these little plastic sheets. The first time I reviewed these, the uh, the first style of these, this was many years ago, didn't have the, the uh, or the glassine sheets in between them. So now they do, which is really nice because it keeps your, uh, your booklet from sealing shut. And then when you're done with it, you can close it up and you can tuck it right back in. Um, so this could like sit on your lap if you're sitting outside somewhere or if you're um, sitting in your car doing a little sketching. And um, the next product that I'm going to show you here are the Viviva watercolor pans. And they came out with a set, like an assorted set, probably about a year ago. And uh, I didn't I didn't review those, but um, once you see these, you're probably going to think that they look a little familiar. So in the box, you have a few goodies. You've got a, um, a swatch card here and you have a little postcard that you can paint. And this um, kind of is uh, sent out to you, the customer. And then you also have a gift that you can give to a friend. So in here, you've got a little bookmark. Now, if you remember my um, Paper Craft Society box, we put these bookmarks in there so that there would be a color media that people could use right off the bat. So it comes with a bookmark of six colors. And there's, oops, it's got a little glassing piece to put in there. And then it's also got a little postcard, but I can't get the little postcard out of this. I think you have to undo, I think you have to open up the envelope, but I don't want to do that so I can share this with somebody. Um, but it comes with that. I think the design is like that, um, the people sitting out on the beach having a picnic and painting. So that's the little design there. And then um, this is designed, all their products are designed to be pretty eco-friendly and um, also to support uh, local women in their community with jobs and whatnot. So this is what the palette looks like. We've got a little sleeve and you push it through. It says Handmade with Love. And then when you get your little palette, this is what it looks like. Obviously, it won't be used, but I wanted to leave that in there so you could see how it dries and how it doesn't beat up on the um, on the paper here. It must have some sort of lamination on it because you can you can paint on there, but the uh, palette itself is supposed to be 100% compostable. It's made with cork, and the paints themselves, when I was looking at these, I'm like, hmm, these look a little familiar, and if you've watched a lot of my reviews, you probably will realize these look a little familiar to you as well. And this one actually fell out, this little pan, and you can kind of see how thin it is. And this looks like the ribbon, um, those little ribbon thin paints from Superior, from like the fan palette. So I got out my, I actually got out my folding one because I had um, I had more colors. I got out my Artify 58 folding one, which apparently is no more, no longer being sold, but it gave me a good um, example because these are made by the Superior company as well. And um, I, what I did was I matched up the colors as good as I could. Oh my goodness. So I matched them up because I can't, they look, they look pretty familiar. Now this one's older and I've had this probably, I don't know, maybe close to a year, maybe eight months or so. And they've started to kind of crack and flake, which is a little bit of a bummer. But um, I looked at the colors and what I did was I did a comparison 
right here. These are the, this is the, the full set of the Viva Spring Colors. There's an assorted set, which I don't have. I think the assorted set has more basic colors for mixing and probably a better set if you're trying to choose between the two. And then I just compared it to the superior colors and I'm like, boy, those seem identical. So then I reached out to the, um, the rep who had reached out to me to review the Viva, Viva products and I said, um, are the paints themselves, because I knew the palettes were made, uh, handmade in India, I said, are the paints from the Superior Company, because they just seem uncannily similar, and they said, yes, they did, they do get the paints from the Superior Company, they have light fast information, which they're going to publish on their website, because I asked them about that, all the colors were either permanent or moderately durable, there were no fugitive pigments, um, they were getting the information from Superior, and they will publish that information on their website. Um, so we just wanted to, to put that out there because they said they were light fast, and I just wanted to confirm that before I just went by what it said. Uh, but anyways, they, they told me, yes, we ordered them for Superior. We are intending to do our paints in-house in the future. We just haven't gotten to that yet, which I can understand. That's very expensive to produce media, um, so a lot of companies start off private labeling or white labeling through other companies. Um, so I also want to let you know that if you have like one of the superior sets that you're going to have duplicate colors if you have one of these big sets. Um, although if you have one of the smaller sets, you probably won't because a lot of these more pastel colors weren't in like the big, the big like 42 color pan sets, the fan pans. Um, so you, these were kind of more like the cocktail and pastel colors added into some of the vibrant colors. But if you have been avoiding these because of all the plastic waste and you've wanted to have these colors, now you can get it in a more eco-friendly option. The thing I do like about this uh, this palette is that the like these little these little paint strips are really thin. So even if you use up the colors in your palette, it might be difficult to be able to refill that with a tube paint. But the recesses here are about twice as thick as the the pan, the paint strip, so you've got about an eighth of an inch. I think you could actually do your own filling with tubes a little bit better on a palette like this. And that's what I intend to do um, when I use these up to see how it works. I think that would I think that would be a really nice option. Plus you could just tuck this right in your pocket because it's so small. Um, now let's look at the paints, both sets of the paints in action. Like I said before, I have um, reviewed the Viviva color sheets before and I've reviewed many iterations of the Superior paints before. I like the Superior paints. I think they're pretty good value for money. This is going for about $22 and also the assorted, the regular um, original sets going for about $22 I believe. And I think this set here is somewhere in the ballpark of like $60, $50 to $60 for this kit. Uh, let's take a look here. So this right here was done with the Viviva color sheets. I was just kind of playing with the pen, playing with the, um, you know, playing with the, the paints. The paper does not feel like a hot press watercolor paper. It's pretty smooth, but it definitely does not have the, um, I don't know. It just doesn't quite feel the same as a hot press watercolor paper. I feel like there's a little bit of drag on my pen, but it is nice and smooth. And if you like to rubber stamp, you could definitely rubber stamp on this paper. It's 120 pounds. They call it their ivory sketchbook paper, uh, premium ivory paper. It doesn't say watercolor paper on it, but um, it definitely can handle a watercolor wash. This I used the, um, the spring pans on. One thing I noticed was that there wasn't a lot of flow on this paper. It pretty much, the paint stayed where you put it, which could be good or bad depending on what you like. But if you are doing quick sketches, um, it, might be, it might be what you want uh, versus, a, and it doesn't stay, stay wet very long. It dries out pretty quick. So that's it's a good thing, I guess, if you wanna be able to fold this up and go on your way with it before everything's dry. Then this one here, I just did a quick sketch and used the uh, the color sheets. And this is a swatch of the sheets here, the color sheets, which is a good idea to do a swatch because um, the colors are very like, that's that color, that's that color. And you know, it's hard to tell what you're gonna get for a color, just like with regular watercolor, when you look at the, um, when you look at the colors themselves, that looks like, oh, that would have been on the previous page. So that would be that one, that would be that one and so on and so forth. So I definitely would swatch out your colors that are on the color sheets just to make sure that you have a good um, a good representation. You know what you can do actually, which I didn't do, I didn't even think about it. Um, they, and I did on my first ones, I just kind of forgot. So when you, 
want to swatch these colors, you're supposed to just swatch them right there. It even says like swatch, but it's in very little print, small print, so you might not be able to read it if you, uh, right there, it says like, I think it says swatch color. I, I honestly can't read that print, it's so small, but it's like it says swatch color, so you can, you know, swatch it so you have it right there with the color. That would actually be the best, uh, the best idea. I think I'm not going to do that all right now because because we got other things to talk about here. Um, but honestly, I mean, the, the colors look nice on the paper. Well, this is the, just the comparison that I showed you. Now, this was a fun little sketch that I did uh, just this morning, actually. And um, I like the way it turned out, but there was, there's a massive shift with the color sheets on this paper from wet to dry. Like, this was really vibrant, and then as it dried, it just kind of got really dull. Now, I think, the, I think the colors are pretty here. They look very natural, because these colors can look very inky and almost... Um, unnatural. So after I did this, I'm like, I wonder what this would look like on the regular like Arches watercolor paper I use a lot. So I just quickly sketched it out again and put paint down in about the same amount as I would on this paper. And on the Arches paper, it's so much more vibrant. Here it almost looks, um, it almost looks like, uh, you know how Distress Oxide ink look, it's, it gets that kind of white film, that white haze over it. I think there might be like a coating on this paper that is, um, uh, that is locking the color down and making it dry fast, kind of like a photo paper would or a um, like a printer, an inkjet printer paper. Because I also noticed that once it dries, if I go over it, it doesn't blur out. Um, so I think there must be some sort of coating on this paper that's making it, once you put that color down, making it dry. It's probably some sort of like, because this is more of a of an ink than a watercolor, I would say that's my opinion, not anything they've said. Um, it does seem to it does seem to do that. It does seem to kind of dry out and, uh, and lock down a little bit. In fact, I don't want to mess up with that one because I actually like that drawing. But let me go back to the crab here and let me just take the water brush and let me make sure it's nice and clean. Oh, one thing you're going to want to add to this is like a rag or paper towel or something because there's nothing um, to blot your brush on. So let me just... See, there's very little lifting. You know, there's a little bit, but... Oh gosh, I just, uh, that was all me. I had a dirty spot on that rag and I just brushed it there. But, you know, it kind of locks it down. Well, I guess if you do a thick, a thick application, you can move it. But, like, the design itself, if you're just painting like a normal person, it's not really going to smear if it gets, like, splashed or wet too badly. You know, you'd at least be able to pick it up before it did any major damage. But look, even when I wet that, look how much brighter that is. And then when it dries, it dries to that kind of, like, um haziness, which I thought was kind of interesting. I don't know what this paper is. It's uh, it's kind of got me stumped. It doesn't feel like a normal watercolor paper, but it, you know, it works fine for this, uh, for this type of um, application for sure. I probably, when I, when it comes time to refill this, I'll probably just use a sketchbook I already have. Um, I wouldn't go out of my way to get this paper. It's just not for me. Although after, you know, 25, what is this, 24 sheets or 48 pages in here, I don't know, after I use that up, I might find that I really like it or I've adapted to it and I want to use it but for me the paper is not um it's not my favorite it's not my favorite I'm definitely more accustomed to a paper like this now something else I wanted to show you looking at the um looking at the two papers so I was working on just I was sketching my cat and my cat moved like immediately after I started sketching her so I've got a hot mess this looks like a nightmare, a uh, nightmare cat. This is a cat that haunts your dreams. Um, but anyway, I was like just kind of playing with the colors on the back and just did a primary kind of mixing color wheel there. And you can kind of see how the colors just kind of, um, you get all these weird hard edges and stuff like that on the paper that's in the sketchbook. When I did it on arches, I got a much more smooth effect. And I did like painting with the pan paints on the arches so much better. It was like having whole, a whole new paint. I would not recommend the pan paints on this paper so much. Um, it's just not a, not a like really um, pleasurable experience. Although I will say that if you just want to depict something really quick, um, the colors dry very fast and you can get a very quick design down but if you're looking for like blends and bleeds and um, texture like granulation and things like that you're not going to get it get it on this paper so that might be a little bit in the weeds a little bit more than you <laughs> than you care to know but um but i just wanted to be really honest and thorough here because uh, i know some things are going to appeal to some people and some things are not I like the idea of this. Um, I don't know how durable it is because I just got it myself. There's a magnet closure. There's two extra slots here, but I don't think you could really fit anything else in here. It's kind of like, 
it's kind of tricky to get it to close. You've got to kind of close it and push it in and kind of like pinch it a little bit and it's really tight. There isn't a lot of extra room. I kind of wish that these slots or there was like maybe there was just like maybe a little bit thicker of a gusset here so that I could put a couple pencils or maybe a ink filled brush or just something. Maybe if you took this out and you put like a smaller like a like a skinny, a long skinny sketchbook, like maybe one of the handbook uh, panoramic ones. I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna show you again how I set it up to paint. I would just put the cover, I flip the cover to the back and I'd slide that in that top slot. And then I would just uh, pull out the mixing area, which is in the back. And I would situate it like this. Now I'm right-handed, so um, it would be better if it was kind of reversed. I don't know if I could, I guess that when I'm ready to use the other half of the sketchbook, but then again, I'd have the spiral on the wrong side. I could turn it around the other way. Um, I don't know. So I probably would maybe rather have the sketch pad on the other side. If I went with a smaller sketch pad, I could probably do a smaller pad on this side if it was narrower and then maybe be able to tuck a couple of extra pencils in there. I don't know. Um, but I will put links down in the video description so you can see uh, what price it is. I think it was on sale for like $50 for this set. Um, if that's something you think would meet your needs, then awesome. Um, if not, that's totally fine too. I just want to want to let you know what's out there. And um, I do think this is kind of cool. I do, I do like the idea of a cork palette. I've never used a cork palette before. And um, these are glued in. I can see a little bit of like glue on the bottom. I could re-glue that in, but honestly, I wanted to leave it so that I could show you. Uh, I could show you how deep the recesses were in there because I think that's that would be fun to refill with tube paint. Um, I could probably even wedge all those out and refill it with tube paint, but might as well use these up while they're here. I, they're kind of thin. I don't think that um, I don't think that much would come out. I'm wondering if I could pop one of these out and then we can compare the thickness. Oh, you know what? I think, I wonder if I can get, oh, they are glued in. I just would like to see how thick that is if it's about the same. Oh shoot. I just chipped a piece off. Yeah, I think they're about the same. I'm not gonna keep pulling on that thread because I'm gonna make a mess and regret it. But, um, but anyways, there you have it. The brand new Viviva color sheets. I think they're fun. I, I do. I think they're fun. And I use the, um, oh, I should have grabbed some sketchbooks where I had more little sketches done with these. I, I use these quite a bit. They say they are equivalent to half pans. So like this booklet is equivalent to a set of like 16 half pans. I have not found that to be the case. I use up the booklets pretty quickly. Like, um, I probably, if I'm doing like five by eight sketchbook, I would probably use up a booklet Maybe I paint a little too heavy, I don't know, but it seems like I'm using it up, you know, across like five pages, which I wouldn't on half pans. I'd never use up that much in half pans. Um, you can get refills. So like you can get, they sell them by like the, the color family so that I guess it would be like a sheet of four colors at a time. And then you can just tuck them back in, I guess, how you tape it back on or something. But that's how they sell them in case you do want to get refills. I think, I don't remember what the price is, but that's all on the Viviva website. You can check that out and see if you think that would be something you like to try. They're a lot of fun. I like that I can just slide it in a sketchbook and or in my pocket and grab a water brush and just be on my way. Very little to, to lug with me. It's nice. It's nice, just something something else, something different. I then they'll never replace my traditional like portable painter half pan travel set, but they are fun and they might be for you, especially if you uh, if you want something that's by that's a little more eco friendly than a plastic palette. Oh, I also want to mention that on the outside of this is said that these are going to be distributed by Call Art, which is a a big company that represents like um, Liquitex and Winsor & Newton and uh, Lefranc and Bourgeois paints and a couple others, I think. So you'll probably be able to find these in stores around the world pretty soon. So um, so now you know what they are when you see them and you're wondering what the heck are these weird things with a cork palette. <laughs> now you know. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And until next time, happy crafting.